What's going on guys, Bob Roach from RoachTechnology.com here with a quick video on how to update your Hackintosh to 10.8.3. Apple just released this update today, March 14th, 2013, and so like I said, I'm going to be showing you guys how to actually update to it. Now for this process, I'll be using this build right back here. It's a Z77 platform on a you know an Intel Core i3, so pretty basic components. I'm sure most people are using the Socket 1155. I'm sure most people are using Socket or um, chipset, the Z77 chipset, so it's pretty standard components, so I feel that what's going to work for me should in theory work for the majority of you guys out there I will be updating my personal like you know my main system but that socket 1366 it's a little bit different so I figured installing it on this for you guys would probably make for I guess you know the easiest experience so before I ramble on anymore I'm gonna show you guys how to install it so here we are on the machine and now as you can see right here it's telling us there's updates available so let's go ahead and get those details and now that it's finished doing its thing and updating, let's go ahead and click more. And right down here, we have the 10.3 update. We're going to get more details. And here's the change log for it. There's nothing really too major. A lot of bug fixes, which, you know, which is typically what we see. But also here, the ability to redeem iTunes gift cards in the Mac App Store using your Mac's built-in camera. Pretty neat. Nothing crazy. You know, just blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to bore you guys with this. Um, you know, nothing crazy. So... I would highly recommend that if you don't need to be up to date at all times, if you have a machine that you went through a huge hassle to get working and you don't want to break it, then just stay where you are. This isn't anything crazy, but keep in mind that if you are to download Mac OS X from the App Store again to create a UniBeast boot drive, then you will be using 10.8.3 from that point on. So just something to keep in mind, but all I'm going to do is click update. And if you're wondering the difference between this kind of an update or just you know downloading the combo update from Apple, I do have a video on that, so be sure to click the annotation you see right now, and that'll take you to the differences on that. But as you can see right here, uh, it's about 567 megabytes, so I'll be back in just a bit when this is done. As you can see here, the update has now finished downloading, and so what you'll do if you ran the combo update, if you went that route, you're simply just going to run it, let it do its thing, and then it's going to ask you to do the same exact thing reboot so let's go ahead and do that mine's going to be a little bit different i would i think it's so i haven't done a combo update in quite a while but um, i don't think with a combo update you'll get this screen you may or may not because i mean this does have like an app store icon but um, either way your system will reboot it'll take a minute to do its thing and after that just cross your fingers and as you can see the system just restarted itself and so i imagine this will only take a second and by the way, that did not take the full eight minutes. I would say it took about two and a half to three. So there's, there's about, you know, a time frame for that on a solid state drive on, you know, pretty a low to mid range system. I would say it'll take about three or so minutes to install. The combo update could be totally different because that's a full update, but um, we'll see. So here you have the uh, Chimera bootloader. So that's going to count down, get some text there, which I usually do. That's absolutely fine. And we'll see if it boots. So far, so good. And it looks like we have a successful installation of 10.8.3. And so here's the desktop here. And uh, to further prove that this is 10.8.3, I'll quit the App Store, go up to about this Mac, and we'll zoom in on this nice and close. And you can see right there, if it doesn't blur too crazily, 10.8.3. So pretty interesting stuff there. Like I said, nothing too major with this update. And overall, for the Hackintosh community, I would definitely say that the vast majority of you guys should be able to update to this without any problems. It's not going to be one of those updates that Apple changed a kernel extension and we have to figure out what's going on. It's not going to be anything like that. This seems to be a very minor update, even though the update was about 500 megabytes, which is more than the Delta update usually is. So obviously some things were changed under the hood, but overall a very easy installation and like I said, shouldn't give you guys too many problems. I have just one last thing I'd like to mention before we part ways, and that's audio. You'll notice that if you hit your volume up and down, depending on your motherboard, you may or may not have audio after an update. This is a very common issue with the Hackintosh, and it's very easy to fix. You only need two things to do this. You're going to need to know what chipset the motherboard you have has in terms of audio. For example, I'm using a board that has the VIA VT2021 audio chipset. I don't even use that because it's kind of a pain. I just have an external USB interface. If you have some kind of an external audio solution that worked before, this won't affect it. It'll be absolutely fine. But if you're relying on your motherboard's audio and you have, say, for example, an ALC 898 or an 892, this is where you're going to have to pay attention. So like I said, you're going to have to know that about your motherboard, and you're also going to need the good old-fashioned MultiBeast. So we'll open up MultiBeast here, 
And this is pretty self-explanatory. If you're on a, a motherboard like this one, like I said in the beginning, that has a Z77 chipset on it, you probably don't have to worry about anything with a DSDT or you know anything like that because you know that's one of the main benefits of a Z77 chipset. But you know, with without DSDT, this totally purely depends on what motherboard you have. So with DSDT, select the appropriate one. Without DSDT, select the appropriate one. Hit continue, reboot, and you should be good to go. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope this helped you. Hopefully you got to 10.8.3. Whether you did or you did not, be sure to let us know down below. Be sure to check out the Roach Technology forums. Let us know your experiences with the 10.8.3 update, what hardware you have, etc. It might help a couple people out. I'm at CPU Kid on Twitter. Also be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com and I hope to see you guys back here soon.